Yo, yo, yo. So, man, you know, I got the issue of Flossin Magazine AR. And this right here, this I think is one of the most proudest things that I've done. Uh, because this culminates a vision that I had before I even started AR. It was trying to figure out how to tell stories about the black experience through print media, more importantly, but also being innovative in that storytelling. Because we're seeing that with all the things that have been happening with digital technology and blogs and all that, uh, that the idea of picking up a magazine and being able to sit back and read it, it's a it's more of a novelty than anything. But for many black publications, you know, print is sort of the thing that really has kept kept many people going. And I just really appreciate being able to in the AR space, like being able to create this stuff, right? And so with it, go ahead, check out the trailer. I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. Dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. 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 I have a dream. 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 I have a dream. 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 I have a dream. I still have a dream. And so what is Floss and AR, right? Floss and Augmented Reality. It's, a, it's an Augmented Reality project like that I created with the 20th volume of Flossin Magazine. And Flossin Magazine, it's a 15 year old black owned media production company in Portland, Oregon that, you know, they just take pride in hard hitting journalism, exploring issues pertaining to black experiences in the community and uh, across the nation, particularly all the stuff that's happened over 2020. And this project really allowed me to apply all the skills that I had into one project, you know, one product that people can experience. And often I've had to compromise between doing design work and going to print and keeping it digital and all those things. But with this, I literally got to do every single thing that I can possibly do as a creator for one piece, one experience. And I think the AR piece really made it possible for that. And, you know, like looking back at it all, like this probably, I mean, this, this definitely took like, it took 14 months to complete like from start to finish i worked on it since september of 2019 and it came out in like november or so something like it was, it was crazy you know but from that like i was not just like working on it consistently though you know i was learning things chipping away at it every now and then and i had the overall idea but i sort of i gave it the time to mature and that was the first time I actually did that with a lot of projects because I'm always trying to crank projects out. But with this one, I gave it time to mature. And as I got better as a creator and a developer, then I would incorporate that into it. And like, quite frankly, like I started building the first assets and stuff, you know, in 2019. But like it started before then, you know, and the AR portion, you know, of that project, it didn't start being incorporated until December 2019 January 2020 and then seeing the finished product in November was you know like it was just a dream come true to like actually just be able to hold it and manifest it and just be able to exist with it and it you know I had a vision to incorporate digital and print media into something seamless 
and highlight the aspects of black experiences that we just wouldn't see in in this type of work you'll see print you probably won't see any black people in ar like that's just the reality and as a black creator in it it's hard if i don't create it who will you know and so you know that was it, it was just such a far-fetched idea for like other people even the editor at some point right like it was just it was just out of out of out of out of left field you know but like it was something that i had the opportunity and potential to do and for me it was a challenge trying to figure out what i could do in this space to mitigate the realities that people have or the preconceived stereotypes and notions that people have about black creators and black media companies and, and stuff right they think it's low budget they think it's trash it's you know not up to par but this is uh this is an antithesis of that you know it's innovation in storytelling with black people at the forefront uh i always like to reference afrofuturism this is afrofuturism right here you know you have innovation with black people included not excluded and you know it, it's 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 something that like i knew i could build and if i was given the opportunity i could do it the way that it's supposed to be done and you know i i, I have years of experience like building up the skill set uh but the reality is that like just me as a, a black creator somebody that's self-taught and you know just often just like opportunities just didn't fall in my lap literally like this is just something i pitched to uh an entity that needed help with things and this was the only place that would hire me you know and and i've crit and i created it with them you know and and i'm really grateful because you know flossa media and john washington spe specifically you know john washington and fawn aberson like they invested in me so that i could pursue this and these visions are the things that improve the offerings for the things that they have for their clients more importantly but it paints a landscape for many people to follow when they they're think they think about this stuff right like this is this is the idea of like what is storytelling right how do you use storytelling in ar because that's the thing that people have been trying to figure out how do you tell stories with ar how do you tell stories about the black experience how do you do both at the same time like this was an exploration of that and and to add some context of like what this project required you know in order to like realize this vision that i had i needed to build the augmented reality app and the ar experiences and all the assets in all the in all the stuff that like sort of came with that right there's illustration 2d animation 3d animation graphic design storyboarding software development ui and ux design logo design podcast production motion graphic animation audio mixing and mastering so sound design web design game design and development video production photography 3d modeling augmented reality de development creative direction art direction animation direction motion capture and even facial facial capture animation you know like these are all the things that i developed along my journey and i have you know failed time and time again to use these skills in a professional capacity literally people just would not hire me to do this stuff and so you know the fact that people wouldn't hire me like it it, it was unfortunate it sucked right i had this stuff that is valuable and people didn't see the value in it but then they find somebody else that doesn't look like me that can do the same thing or something that's less and then they'll pay them for it and it's like dude like come on now like and so you know that's why it's like i'm i'm forever grateful for you know the opportunity that flossing gave me because this is the vision that i saw in my mind years ago and i was actually able to realize it with time and and the support that i needed and more importantly like i'm fortunate to just you know have connected with the community that appreciates this type of stuff even if they don't understand it and you know to create this project because it it gave them an opportunity to create something that no one else would and no one else could at that point and and for that like i am forever grateful right like forever because this is this is something that you know i really i really appreciate it 
And, you know, I think this really speaks to my journey as a as an AR creator and developer because last year, like prior to COVID, things were just it, it was just different, right? Like it there were like just things were just so up in the air in many areas for me. Like I was a personal trainer and a wellness coach and was trying to, you know, make ends meet. I was making like twelve thousand dollars a year, if that. And I was trying to find a way to just like get myself in the creative industry. And to be honest, like I was trying to just, I wasn't even trying to make money. Like I was just trying to just live comfortably in Portland and use the skills that I had to just like pay bills. Like that was it. Like it, I, it has been so, it's just been a grind, man. Like until this point, like, you know, most of the things that I was trying to do just was just to find validation of just the skills that I had and the vision that I wanted to pursue. I would say that one clear mission that I had for my career was to just find an entry level position at a creative agency or, you know, just anything adjacent that would allow me to just learn more about the industry and fine tune my skills. Like at the bare minimum, I just wanted to just be able to do, use my creative skills, use Photoshop at work, you know? rather than just like using them as a hobby and i was also just you know looking for some stability financially and being a freelancer is full of it's just full of so much uncertainty much like you know how 2020 was and i was just hoping to be in a position where i could just grow professionally rather than bouncing from one project to another project with nothing to really build off of you know, and after a series of just frustration, job rejections and stuff like I stumbled into the offices of Flossen and, you know, the Soul District. And I, I sent them the same resume that I sent everyone else. And they were the only ones that granted me an opportunity. And to be clear, you know, to be creative and to be clear, like they saw potential that everybody else saw, I guess, or didn't see. And they were the ones that, that pulled the trigger. And, you know, they men they mentioned how they, you know, they run a publication and have tons of projects that, that come down the pipeline. And it seemed like it, it was just a great starting point for me that would really develop my and test my skills. And being such a, a small entity, like I I knew that there would be an opportunity to just innovate and develop ideas without the traditional sort of red tape you know creatives often have to subject themselves to do and more importantly like it's a black owned company and i'm always looking forward to like helping and giving black owned businesses uh, a leg up just to thrive because it is tough out here right like you know we got right wingers and redlining and all these different things that uh stop black businesses and black people from uh just making ends meet and, and excelling even if they can you know uh compete and and it's just, you know, being able to uh, be tapped into the community in that way is, is always something that I'm fortunate to have just with the skill set that I have. And so it's like, why not? You know, and so I, I just saw this as a unique opportunity because there was just tons of potential to build on and a level of agency that I could maintain while I'm doing all this stuff. And I think that that just allows me to create cool things. And more importantly, like I could come up with the solution and I usually would come up with you know my own projects and uh, you know implement them but implementing them in a way that helps other entities is always great and also to get paid for it you know I'm always good for that too right like when they presented me with the opportunity to work on the print publication that they hope to distribute in person about black issues nationally and in Portland you know I, I definitely had tons of stuff I intended on adding to the project that would change how people saw just black people in print and you know print media just just innovate in ways that often just you know leave black communities and creators behind and I wanted to just change something about that there are certain aspects of the of the book that I was just you know really excited about and particularly the cover right because the cover that I mean that was a long time coming uh, partly because like it was in collaboration with the organization We Count Oregon and it was supposed to be this first AR cover for the magazine and 
We Count Oregon is a women PLC led organization that advocates for census counting in Oregon for people of color specifically. Uh, I asked myself like, what would that mean to visualize and how would that, how would people just experience that in AR, right? I think back to just the, the research I did on immersive experiences and I parsed the, the breadth of options down to animation, sound and interactions. And the experience needed to be an audio component. It needed to have audio. It needed to have visuals that move and objects that you can interact with by moving the phone and, and tapping on the screen. There had to be call of actions that like people literally had to do stuff to change that experience. And those ended up being pillars for the things that I wanted to implement in all the pages on this, like literally all of it. And so doing the cover art, you know, it, it can be challenging because you have to try to capture the overall idea in one image, as well as, you know, a being a visual storyteller that captures ideas across multiple images. I find that limiting that time, like I find that it's just limiting sometimes, right? Because regardless of what you do, you know, you, you can't, you can't do everything. And so I, I try to mediate the effects by having tons of conversations with my collaborators and clients uh, after hours of brainstorming I, I developed like seven to eight sketches right and and, and it worked but it, it just didn't it just didn't hit and so you know for me it was just a matter of being able to create something that uh, spoke to black people and and spoke to the ideas that black people were often subjected to and so I finally figured out something, right? Like it, it had, it was a black fist, you know, punching through a wall and surrounded by red tape. And I think it, it really spoke to the black experience in Oregon because of the history of Oregon and, you know, in institutions that are perpetuated by a white supremacy and by disenfranchising black people and making them not being able to go to certain places it excluded them and and there is lasting effects there and i really liked it and after showing it to flossen you know like we proceeded to animate it as a as a sequence and and made the cover more dynamic and all these different things like john washington the the editor of flossen magazine wanted to just make it edgy and and sp speak to the pandemic and really the the lack of empathy from the white house and he wanted to he wanted to make a statement and by doing that you know like me i'm the edgy dude right i made pokemon twerk team you know all those different things that that sort of are on the internet like i had a part in some of it you know and part of that is like part of my identity right and and i can't shy away from that and so from there i sort of took the idea put trump in it like did all these things made it sort of this rambo-esque characterization of him during a pandemic really just wreaking havoc and that it it was it is it was what it was right like and i thought it turned out pretty good like it transitioned well and all those different things but the client did not like that kid you not the client was like nah this is not something that we want you know to represent us and you know that they wanted to go a different way and after hours and hours of work and like building this thing out we ended up not we had to go back to the drawing board for it and you know stuff like that happens right like it happened with the invent the future where i had you know garrett morgan coming out with chains and then he pops out and hulks out breaks the chains and does some kai blast right that that worked but it didn't because they weren't they they just didn't see it being applied that way and it, it's it's unfortunate sometimes and and you know what can you do like you can't you can't really do much about that except for you know go with the flow and so I went back to some brainstorming meetings and and after all that you know for the AR stuff like we ended up just like going with something really simple and so you know still having the sound having the motion interactions I just stuck with two of them I took the cover image, I sort of put in animated loop and after effects, and from there I really just wanted to portray just black power and having a crowd say black lives matter and having 3D models come to life and, and pumping their fists out and, and showing what they needed to do. 
and you know all that stuff like got to tap in with Mixamo got to do a lot of different things for motion capture to just capture this because it, it gives you an idea of the visceral nature of what all that stuff looks like you know you're not able to do that during a, during a pandemic but you could do that in the comfort of your home and still have that experience through AR and just a variety of other things right and so that that's that's just what that's just what happened and so from there like we John is really he was really passionate about the potential of this and what it could stay and so what we ended up doing is just taking all the stuff that got rejected that John liked and adding it to his letter to the editor and quite frankly like that really set the tone for the book you know because John is really passionate and so after various conversations I started thinking about how to capture the passion and emotion that went into the letter you know it is often difficult to like truly express how you feel with words especially if you're not a writer and so I got a hint from that like okay what can I do that's John and so it, it you know I wouldn't say that he, he he's not a bad writer but he's just a better speaker you know and so the power comes from his voice and it I mean it's unique and has a level of conviction that stands out like just literally just it's just spot on like it it, it it does the thing that it needs to do and interestingly enough right like it, that is often what black people have to work with you know their voice if they want to be heard they need to shout from the mountaintops until people hear them and I took that idea in concept and I thought about what I could do to capture that essence you know and w more importantly like I thought that I could do it with AR to elevate his voice you know not take away from it not change it but literally just elevate it add layers to it and so I already knew that he wanted to use the Donald Trump like Rambo animation that didn't work for the whatchamacallit the the cover when I went into the office to capture some photos for a 3D model I was going to make of him, I decided to actually just capture some raw audio uh, of his thoughts about the book, how it relates to the current social climate, and I turned on the mic and, and let him just do what he does best. And of course, like he delivered, like he hit it out of the park, like he did exactly what he, you know, what I know him to do. And I captured a series of clips of him talking into the mic while recording some b-roll and that gave me a variety of assets that i could work with sticking to the mission of adding visuals and sounds to book text i collected animation audio and video for it and, and now it was it was just time to stitch it all together at this point with the app i had to i already had it built in unity right and all i had to do was just make a video and with all the elements to it and connect it with image targets for the page, you know, all that stuff, right? I found that, you know, because watching videos in AR is different than watching them on YouTube or anything like anything that you're streaming, right? You know, the interesting thing about it is that like the file size and the resolution just not didn't need to be that. And so ironically, like 480p video, 240p video, like that stuff works, you know, that, that doesn't bloat your apps and it provides extra space and it still gives you that experience because when we experience AR and we experience video in AR, it's such a, it's such a low resolution, it's crazy. And so I think that, you know, because you're watching something in AR, you're looking for, you're looking at a small video, you know, through a frame of a small phone screen. And so often, in order to see the the AR experience in full frame, you need to you need to be a distance away from the AR the actual AR object, and so therefore you're just not going to see those details, and that means that you know you're like full HD is just not even like you don't need to worry about that, you know you just can't it it just doesn't do anything for you, and so uh, it it just ended up being a great experience that you know I was able to build something that was hard hitting. It was authentic. It was unapologetically black. It, using art and technology, it was it was just wild, right? 
it was wild. And I think when I look back at all these different things, I got the opportunity to do so much stuff that I dreamed about doing, but didn't really know how to approach it and do it. And I think just with all the things with this project, I got to play around with iClone. I got to play around with Character Creator. I got to create 3D models of real people. And more importantly, I got to actually allow you to play with those characters in AR without having to make a game, without having to do all these sort of tumultuous things to where with Floss and AR, the augmented reality experience, you could walk in the shoes of a black man through AR. You can could, you could make him 20 feet tall, you can make him two feet tall and you could you could walk his walk and it, it's you know many people joke joke around around about like soul and you know how the the white lady was controlling the black man to be successful i mean you could literally that embodies that experience in a in an authentic way where you want to see what it's like to walk down the street as the editor of flossin magazine you could do that if you want to have a big black power fist in the middle of downtown you could do that as well like floss and ar just incorporates so many different things that i just really appreciate about and it allowed me to share in ways that i have always tried to but never really had the opportunity to and it, it's just an amazing feeling to to see this out in the world because it culminates so many things that i i just wanted to do but never had the opportunity to and now that i do like now this is a reference point whenever people ask me oh what is storytelling about the black experience what does that look like before floss and ar there was nothing after floss and ar that's it right there i give people floss and ar tell them to download it tell them to open up the pages you can touch it you could, you could see it, you could hear it, you could do all the things, you could experience it in a variety of different ways. And it, it still is a unique experience. And so if you haven't checked out Flossin AR, go to flossinmedia.com, go to Flo search the app store for Flossin Augmented Reality, Flossin AR, and, and, and check it out, tap in with it because this is this is something that I think will will really have lasting effects for for a lot of people. You know, that experience of AR and storytelling within a page is is something that I think will continue to to flourish and, and really build and pick up on. And so with it, I, I really appreciate it. As usual, check out uh, PDX Black Rose. Check out Black Superheroes Matter. Hit me up on Patreon, patreon.com slash Iltopia. Check out the merch at shop.iltopia.com. You know, just keep, keep, you know, stuck in augmented reality. I, I just really appreciate the time and, and all the support and making it through the video. You know, this is a, this is great. And so, oh, and obviously check me out at the future of everything festival because you know this like this whole idea of um social impact and and storytelling and ar and all this stuff it, it, it just feels really it feels really interesting and, and great to uh finally feel like i found my place and that place is uh really tapping in with the community that that i think can benefit the most from this type of technology and the access points and the opportunities that come with it and the connections that you're able to build with the utilization of this and so it's like what is what is the power of ar you know it's to improve the conditions of of black people in this country that's the power of ar and with the work that i'm continuing to do i'm i'm going to try to do that uh in the best way that i can either through inspiration through opportunities through education uh i think I have the I have the opportunity and the privilege and the responsibility to do so because if I don't like who will you know like Michael Jordan made it possible for black people to have their own shoes because 
he was successful and he was able to do things. But then he also just embodied an idea that people that looked like him were able to see, right? Christopher Columbus gave many a white people the opportunity to see that they could go to a new world and they could conquer it. And history followed suit, right? So the idea of representation is so powerful just by existing, you know? It's so hard to just get to the point where you exist. And for me, being able to realize an idea and just have it exist out there is gives people inspiration to continue with that path of innovating. Because if you didn't know that it existed, then you wouldn't even think twice to even pursue it. But it takes just that one spark of interest, that that one spark and that one spark can light wildfires and those wildfires can change the landscape for uh, us and everyone you know and and yeah it's, it's it's just a great opportunity so you know i appreciate all the support everyone that that's you know that's watching <laughs> listening uh it feels like i'm sort of on a soapbox sometimes when i when i talk about these projects and make stuff like this but then I always get people that respond months later, years later, how they, they watched the video and they, they were inspired to do something. And so, you know, not immediate gratification, but you know, like this is, this is what I signed up for. It's to, it's to have a legacy and to make an impact in people's lives that, you know, they, that they were able to come to on their own accord and, uh, and when they needed to, when they needed somebody f to help them, uh, albeit asynchronously, uh, being being there for them is 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 why I do this. And so, again, appreciate it, appreciate everything. So that tapping with all the stuff, stuck on an island, stuck in augmented reality, and. Hopefully I'm able to share a lot of a lot of new exciting things that are coming on the horizon. So without further ado, adios. Yo yo yo, this is Steve from Stuck on an Island. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to check out my work. Follow me on all the social nets. Be sure to check out my studio Iltopia on all the other platforms. And if you want to get some merch, check out shop.iltopia.com.